Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing the 1858 simultaneous exhibition. Now uh, Morphy held against eight opponents uh, simultaneously uh, in Birmingham, and it's uh, well, it's going great so far. Only one loss for Morphy, but that was uh, that was a beautiful one. If you haven't seen it, do check it out. Uh, the link to the entire Morphy saga is always in the description below. So even if you're just starting out, you are more than welcome to join. So here, uh, Morphy's opponent is uh, William Rideout Wills, and he is, uh, as it says. Uh, the secretary of the Birmingham Chess Association and also one of the organizers of the Birmingham Chess Congress. Now there is a, a some there was some dispute whether this is uh, his opponent or a gentleman with a very similar name, uh, but uh, I think the the general consensus is that this was uh, in fact Morphy's opponent. So without further ado, let's check it out. It's quite a nice game, so let's see what happened here. Morphy with the white pieces opens as he usually does with e4. Uh, we have c5 by Wills, uh, we have knight to f3, knight to c6, and now d4. Striking in the center, we have captures, captures, and now e6, going for the Taimano variation of the Sicilian, even though, of course, it was not called that uh, in 1858. Uh, and here, bishop to e3. Uh, Loventhal was giving some of his suggestions during the game, and he was uh, saying something like knight to b5 is the go-to move here, you should kind of play this. And while in those days, uh, great games were won with knight to b5, today, that that is not uh, that is not the case. So Morphy goes bishop to e3. Morphy really uh, enjoyed developing his bishops to e3 and the d3. Uh, we have knight to f6 and now bishop to d3. Uh, we have e5 and this is a this is a weird move to play as it kind of wastes black a tempo, uh, but he really wants to get rid of this knight. So here e5. Uh, the problem is uh, while you do get rid of this knight, this pawn uh, this pawn will remain a backwards pawn forever. And uh, there will not be all that much you can do about that. So here, knight captures, b captures, black is of course hoping to get d5 in at some point, but Morphy just castles. And now d5, although it seems possible because the d5 square is defended twice, uh, uh, would run into complications. For example, if d5 captures, captures, and now c4 going after that center as the black king is still in the uh, center of the board, we have d4 challenging the bishop and let's say bishop to g3. And now, yes, you can develop your pieces in castle, that's not a problem, but after let's say bishop e7, knight d2 and castles, you get queen to c2 and now you have some issues here. The threat of course is captures and then captures on h7 and there uh, doesn't seem to be uh, a, a good way for black to deal with this. You, you have to create some weaknesses here and whatever you do, uh, you're going to run into trouble. For example, if h6 then just captures, captures and after b4 you can see the position on the queen side. Uh, it's just uh, awesome for white. White already has a beautiful pass pawn here and uh, the, the, it's just a very easy position to play. Uh, so not sure if Wills knew all this, but he still decided to go with the conservative d6. Uh, and okay, Morphy strikes in the center with f4. Uh, this is a bit uh, risky by Morphy, but we have to remember he is playing blindfold against eight opponents. Uh, but here, if someone uh, did this to you nowadays, you go knight g4 right away. You want to go after that dark square bishop. If you can eliminate uh, white's bishop pair, then uh, knight to g4 uh, must be played. And there's no way for black to save the bishop. If you move the bishop, then just queen b6 check and the black wins. King h1, knight f2, check, it's game over. So instead, after f4, we have e captures on f4. Uh, Wills doesn't go for the for the knight to g4 move. And now just bishop captures on f4. Bishop to e7 and now knight to c3. Morphy continues development. We have rook to b8 going after the b2 pawn. And now e5. Uh, Morphy says your king has been in the center of the board for far too long. We have to open up some lines. So here we have d captures. Bishop captures also comes with an attack on the rook. So rook to b4. And now queen to f3 going after that c6 pawn. So here we have queen to b6 delivering check and now king to h1 by Morphy and only now bishop to g4. And here we have a very very interesting uh, position that requires a lot of calculation. So uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for Morphy here while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, as this is not an easy move to find. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to g3. Morphy actually played queen to f2 because he wanted to uh, have all, all the pressure uh, along the f-file, but queen to g3... 
uh, is very, very complicated uh, for, for black to play because the threat is, uh, well, of course, uh, you can see that if you eliminate the knight, the knight is no longer defending the bishop. The problem is the rook is defending the bishop. Uh, but once you take all of this into consideration, for example, after this, black and castle, if black dares, but after castles, the problem is a3. And now you say the rook cannot remain here and defend the bishop. And to make matters worse, uh, if you go uh, rook captures on b2, just knight a4 attacks the rook and the queen. And if you try something else, if after moving the rook, uh, th there are no squares. You could try rook d4 to try and give up uh, the, the, the rook for this very strong dark square bishop. Uh, but white will even ignore you and go bishop captures on f6, bishop captures and now knight to e4. And now black is just lost. The bishop is now hanging as the rook no longer defends it. Uh, this is being threatened. You cannot move the light square bishop because the king occupies the same file as the queen. So this is just uh, resigns uh, for black. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you do. You'd have to give up the rook here, but it's pretty pointless even playing this. So instead, after bishop to g4, Morphy had this very sneaky uh, queen to g3, but he played queen to f2 instead and offered a queen trade. So uh, he was uh, very confident in his skills to, to play this. We have queen captures, rook captures, and now bishop to c5, challenging Morphy's rook. Maybe even checking if Morphy uh, was uh, you know, able to conceive the entire board as he was blindfold. Uh, but Morphy just moves the rook, rook f to f1, and now bishop back to e7. And now comes a3, finally going after that rook, saying that if you capture now, it's still not good. Because if rook captures, then Morphy will just play h3. And once the bishop moves, knight to d5. And now the rook is under attack here. Doesn't really matter where you move it. Let's say rook b8, uh, rook b7, you cannot go to b8. Now bishop to a6. Again, challenging the rook. And now once the rook moves, now you're going to go for knight to c7 check. And the black is not castling. It's going to be a very, very uh, tricky position to play. Uh, for example, if king d8 at, uh, going after the knight, just to rook 8 to b1. And this is just a crazy position. Uh, if rook captures on c7, you first deliver rook f to d1 with check. And now, not much to be done here. Knight to d5, uh, c4 is coming. So first, just rook b8 check. Bishop to c8, and now c4. And black's uh, entire position is uh, tied up. Uh, there, there's uh, nothing nothing to be done here. There's no move uh, black can make. Uh, it's just uh, all, all going to fall, fall apart very soon. So instead of this uh, greedy pawn grab, uh, Wilt just goes back. Rook to b7 and now knight to e4. Uh, we have bishop back to d7 guarding that pawn. Uh, if you capture captures, then the c6 pawn might come under attack. So Wilt defends it. And now uh, he asks Morphy, uh, do you dare uh, go for it? And Morphy says, even though I'm blindfold, I most definitely dare go for it. And he shows uh, what he calculated here. Morphy plays knight captures on f6. And this is just the start of a crazy, crazy line that you will not believe that, that happened. G captures on f6. We have bishop captures on f6. Bishop captures. Rook captures on f6. Rook captures on b2. And now rook to e1 with check. Bishop to e6. And now comes bishop to f5. With a triple attack on the bishop here. So king to e7 defending and now rook to h6. Going after the h7 pawn. So Wills goes rook h to b8. And off, uh, prepares this tricky rook to b1 move. Uh, but Morphy just says I've calculated all of this uh, at that moment when I decided to capture on f6. And here Morphy just plays bishop captures on e6. And it looks crazy because rook to b1. What happens then? But... Uh, Rook to b1 was indeed played and now Morphy needs to figure out a way how to avoid being checkmated and how to avoid severe material loss. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the only move uh, good for Morphy while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able uh, to do it, congratulations on not getting checkmated or suffering severe material loss. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook to g1. This is the only move that gives a Morphe a better position. Uh, problem is, if you don't do that, if you play anything else, if you capture here, uh, sorry, that rook just moved to d1 for some reason uh if you capture on b1 is just mate in one captures captures this is checkmate uh if you don't capture if you try something like giving the king some breeding room then just captures with check and after the king moves rook captures black is up a rook so rook to g1 the only winning idea and the morphe had to see all of this when he decided to capture on f6 otherwise you just don't don't go for that 
So here uh, we have f captures on e6 and now rook captures on h7 with check. King to d6 and now rook captures on a7. Morphe now up two pawns. Uh, but okay, it's not a problem. The c pawn will, will fall. So can Morphe win this being up only one pawn? So rook g1 check. King captures on g1 and now rook to b1 with check. Uh, checking the king, we have king to f2 and now rook to b2. And now this pawn will fall, uh, but as you all know, uh, when you have a, a, a position like this or rather an endgame like this where uh, you have an outside passed pawn that you can push, always remember passed pawns must be pushed. So here Morphe starts pushing it and plays h4. Uh, we have rook captures on c2 with check king g3 and now king to e5 trying to trying to catch up to that pawn but it really doesn't help but it would it wouldn't help black even if you just started pushing the pawn because uh that that pawn w will not be going anywhere the king can just intercept it very easily so here he tried king e5 but just h5 king to f5 but just h6 and now if king g6 h7 the h7 pawn is defended there's no way for the rook to Get up to it and h8 queen is coming so after h6 we have rook to d2 uh, preparing to block the pass pawn but morphe just plays h7 and it was in this position that uh, william Ryder wills uh, resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here problem is uh, if you go for rook to d8 uh, guarding this pawn uh, white doesn't only have the outside pass pawn on the h file but also on the a file and this is just uh, not possible to defend uh, for example uh, if rook to g7 threatening rook g8 to cut off the rook's defense of the square uh, just to rook h8 and now you start pushing the other pawn and that's it there is nothing good for black to play king f6 you're gonna play rook c7 and then black might try something like c5 to get you to trade pawns but you just ignore him a5 c4 you're gonna play a a6 c3 and now after a7 uh, c2 is no longer an option because the rook just captures it and if you now capture this pawn then this pawn queens so that obviously doesn't work so after a7 uh, you would have to play something like king to g6 but then just king to f4 and black is without a move here there's uh, simply no move you can make here and uh, that's that's just it uh, so after h7 uh, wills resigns the game and yet another great victory for paul charles morphy in this uh, eight men uh, blindfold simultaneous exhibition uh, we uh, we only have one more game remaining that we are going to show from this simul so uh, you know br brace yourselves uh, and then we are continuing uh, to to who knows what uh, in, in the morphy saga will the match with stanton happen will it not happen why will it or will not happen so it's going to be it's going to be pretty wild uh, so uh, that's uh, the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Polak Shlomo, Matthew Farrell, uh, Jonathan Fish, Milan Kuzmanovic, uh, and Ali Vatani for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess tour. Uh, if not in the chess tour, the chess tour is about to start, but whatever else happens in the chess world is what I wanted to say. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.